Dear mainstream media, I can't but help find it ironic that you are rushing to the aid of a damsel in distress when that very same damsel has pointed out again and again how sexist it is to rescue damsels like this. A damseled woman, on the other hand, is shown as incapable of escaping the predicament on her own and the perpetual victims of male violence. I mean, in games, rescuing a damsel is just robbing them of their agency. And does nothing to change patterns of perpetual victimhood. And preventing them from solving their own problems. That is, mainstream media. You are just turning Anita Sarkeesian into a ball in the game of patriarchy. In our first episode, I described the damsel in distress trope as playing into a form of objectification, because traditionally damsel characters become the central object or goal in a competition between men. I explained that in the game of patriarchy, women are not the opposing team, they are actually the ball. Further, you are intrinsically sexist, since when Jack Thompson came out with this video games encourage murder bullshit. Though the $130 million suit was dismissed, Thompson is still convinced that these images inspired three murders. Number one! Jack Thompson! Grand Theft Auto 4, Grand Theft Auto 4. This barred attorney, Jack Thompson, has long been an advocate against obscenity in pop culture. To him, this is not entertainment, it is a murder simulator. You were like, yeah, but Jack Thompson's an idiot, and people are perfectly justified to wear those everyone hates Jack Thompson t-shirts and to create games where they beat him up. But when Anita Sarkeesian comes out with this bullshit, like video games cause sexism, and people call her on it. Then you're like, oh no, look what a terrible problem gaming has with sexism. She must really be onto something. But for me, I'm not a sexist like that. I'm for equal opportunities. If I see a wrinkly old man saying something that's bullshit, I call him on it. Game industry lobbyists are quick to point out a total of nine federal courts have rejected so-called studies that video games cause aggression. And I do exactly the same thing if it's a pretty young girl. But coming back to your desperate need to save this damsel, maybe I can help you distinguish between a, a real damsel and someone who is just playing you for a chump. You just may be the most gullible fool I ever marked. And that makes you special. Truth? I played you from minute one. You see, this is the way that it works. If you have real death threats, credible ones, the first line of action is always to say, contact the FBI and keep your mouth shut. After all, if you go and blow off your mouth in public, you jeopardize any potential investigation and reduce the chances of the person who you think is actually making credible threats being caught. Because if you think someone is making credible death threats, the last thing that you want is for them to go to ground. And yeah, not only did I work this out for myself because it's bloody common sense, but when I had some credible death threats and did contact the FBI, this was the first thing that they told me. Don't respond. But that's not what Anita Sarkeesian did. She went and tweeted about it straight away about her death threats to ensure it ended up on all of the blogs. At best, it's outstandingly dumb. Well, curiously, these uh, threats coincided with the release of her new videos, which until now had been gathering less and less attention since her uh, initial victim-orientated Kickstarter project originally raised the cash. It's far from clear if the docs that she says are being dropped here are anything more than her public address of her uh, charity organization. And as many have pointed out, there's something just really weird about Anita being able to find all of these tweets within 12 seconds of them being posted without her even being signed in to Twitter. But what I can tell you with certainty is within 24 hours of her getting this massive mainstream attention, she put out a tweet asking for money. After all, she was only given $160,000 for her Kickstarter project, which was 25 times what she said she needed to do the project. I actually raised 25 times what I initially asked for. And she's only made five or six videos so far. Of course she needs more money, and she's not just milking faux threats for cash. 
Because as we all know, gamers are complete psychos and have a long reputation of killing game critics. Oh, hang on. No, that's right. No, they don't. I mean, let's just put this sexist gaming media into perspective. When Jack Thompson got death threats, where was the social justice warrior outrage then? Um, some people have intentionally incited people to kill me, try to uh, threaten to kill me. Where were the smug, self-righteous Muppets saying, Oh, death threats to show that video games don't cause violence. Thank you for proving my point. Yeah, death threats or not, the wrinkly old white man is widely hated and no one cares. But when the pretty young woman gets exactly the same crap for exactly the same bogus argument, apart from, for her, games cause sexism rather than violence, Game industry lobbyists are quick to point out a total of nine federal courts have rejected so-called studies that video games cause aggression. And you're one of the most shameful social justice warrior pity parties ever. Well, you can make of that what you will, but it turns out that Anita is a big fan of Joss Whedon. You know, the guy who made the Avengers and Firefly. But it looks like Joss Whedon is also a fan of of hers and he puts out this tweet watch the feminist frequency tropes versus women video even if you think you get it the sheer tonnage makes the misogyny seem newly appalling i watched a bunch of women getting sliced up in video games and now i'm watching it on my twitter feed feminist frequency is just truth telling deal hmm joss i'm really not quite sure you understand the kind of a uh, truth telling that anita sarkeesian is into and how sexist your work would appear to the eyes of a staunch feminist like Feminist Frequency if it were given similar scrutiny. The practice of using hypersexualized women as ornamental objects has been especially brazen in the Notice how the camera moves, how it focuses on and zooms in on specific body parts to highlight the aspects of women meant to be the most important. Oh me, honey. Systematize sexuality in ways that dehumanize women. Fuck yeah, baby. Essentially turning them into vending machines, dispensing sex. Are you feeling lonely, Marty? Their worth as characters is measured entirely in terms of what they can give to the clubs. I have a theory about all this. As we all know, nothing is more symbolic of sexism than the assumption that women should cook for men. I'm very... I've sadly gotten used to sexist slurs and sexist insults, usually involving kitchens and sandwiches. And just rather than steering clear of this trope altogether, Joss Wheaton fully endorses it. I'll cook you something. Well, no, I'm in for you. I'm a fine cook, everyone says. Are you enjoying your own new buy a little slave girl? She wanted to make me dinner. Um, I'll get you a refill. Mm -hmm. That's for me to do. Ensuring that women and their fictional representations are systematically disempowered and victimized. I lived my life in the maiden house, waiting to be married off for trade. Tonight, as well as paying tribute to Joss Whedon and the wonderful female characters that he's created. I didn't think to make enough for your friends, but everything's laid out if you'd like to cook for your husband. Wife soup. I must have done good. Yes, dear. You done good. Mm. I also find it deeply troubling that a privileged white male like Josh Wheaton is complaining about women getting sliced up in video games when the movies he makes, like The Cabin in the Woods, is basically a sadistic, misogynistic fantasy about disempowering and demeaning women and propagates some of the most harmful and pernicious socially misogynistic traditions ever. In some cases, the women are just cut up by Josh. It's a rush streaming from a carefully concocted mix of sexual arousal connected to the act of controlling and punishing representations of female sexuality. But Josh doesn't just stop with slicing women up in his videos. He puts 
men in empowering situations over women. Remember, subjects act, objects are acted upon. You may have to write it down. We refer to this as torture porn. These men are essentially the physical presence of the patriarchy to remind men of their physical superiority over women. The voyeurs of Josh's fantasies are invited to explore the possibilities of pausing the film to extend Wheaton's simulated torture of a helpless woman. Because this is what we learn from Anita Sarkeesian, that simply because you are given the option by the creators means that you are being invited to explore these ways of viewing the media. Game developers set up a series of rules, and then within those rules, we're invited to test the mechanics to see what we can do and what we can't do. We are encouraged to experiment with how the system will react or respond to our inputs and discover which of our actions are permitted and which are not. The game makers have set up a series of possible scenarios involving vulnerable, eroticized female characters. Players are then invited to explore and exploit those situations during their playthrough. The player cannot help but treat these female bodies as things to be acted upon because they were designed, constructed, and placed in the environment for that singular purpose. Players are meant to derive a perverse pleasure from desecrating the bodies of unsuspecting virtual female characters. It's a rush streaming from a carefully concocted mix of sexual arousal connected to the act of controlling and punishing representations of female sexuality. Indeed, what Joss does is far worse than what happens in video games. With video games, the protagonist has some choice about the outcome. With Joss Wheaton's material, you have no option but to watch the inevitable outcome. Sexualizing and objectifying the torture of women. Could the hatred of women be any clearer? This shouldn't have to be said, and sadly, it does need to be said. This is misogyny, and that should make us all rightfully angry. But we can further tell just how much Joss hates women by using the Anita Sarkeesian Tropes vs. Women series. Damn, Joss even makes a movie where the whore and the virgin must be sacrificed to an ancient evil. And of course, the whore must die first. There must be at least five. The whore, she's corrupted. She dies first. And of course, he loves slut-shaming the women in his videos. You must have taken a dozen slaves a dozen days to get you into that get-up. Of course, your daddy tells me it takes the space of a schoolboy's wink to get you out of it again and using derogatory gender slurs against them. Did you? Well, I don't suppose you're the only whore that did. They made a torrent of misogynistic slurs. How about, I stay out of your whoring? Well, that didn't take you long. You keep out of Don't know these folks, don't much care to. They're whores. I'm in. I really think that the boy Joss should be taking a hard look in the misogynistic mirror before making tweets like this. Watch Feminist Frequency's Tropes vs. Women video, even if you think you get it. The sheer tonnage makes misogyny seem newly appalling. And remember how Anita told us that gender signifiers were basically a way of promoting and propagating sexualized and demeaning attitudes towards women. The most commonly used gendered signifiers, or feminizing accessories, are lipstick, long eyelashes, and the color pink. But there are a whole host of other design elements that, in combination, serve the same purpose. Other signifiers used to differentiate women from men are pigtails, high-heeled shoes, painted nails, pronounced makeup, especially blush and eyeshadow, midriff-bearing outfits, exaggerated breasts with exposed cleavage, and a heart motif in their design or powers. One repercussion of constantly relying on feminizing signifiers for character design is that it tends to reinforce a strict binary form of gender expression. The gender binary is an entirely artificial and socially constructed division of male and female into two distinctly separate and opposing classes of human being. Oh, wait a minute. What do we have here, Joss? Here, you affirm the idea that women are the properties of others. Sorry to interrupt, folks. Y'all got something that belongs to us, and we'd like it back. An object to be reclaimed. This is a form of objectification because as objects, damseled women are being acted upon. 
most often becoming or reduced to a prize to be won, a treasure to be found, or a goal to be achieved. The hero's fight to retrieve his stolen property then provides the lazy justification. Gun her down. The girl is a witch. Yeah, but she's our witch. So cut her the hell down. This new video series will primarily focus on tracking five stereotypical representations of women. I'm going to look at the damsel in distress, the fighting quest toy, the sexy sidekick, the sexy villainess, but face it, hubby, I'm really hot, and the most common trope in video games, women as background decoration. Female characters that fall under the background decoration trope, however, don't even rise to the level of importance necessary to be pawns in someone else's game. Well, the pattern of utilizing women as background decoration works to reinforce the myth that women are naturally fated to be objectified, vulnerable, and perpetually victimized by male violence. Seriously, the woman's objectification is so obvious that she just stands as an object in the shop window. Like a, like a item waiting to be purchased. Yes, Joss Whedon's characters are a long list of stereotypical misogynistic tropes, one after the other. Plot devices that capitalize on female trauma for shock value function in much the same way as the hitting a child or kicking the dog tropes do. You can still walk away from this. I know you're tired. Don't go visiting my intentions. Don't ever. <laughs> These vignettes are not major plot points. Instead, violence against women is essentially used as a set piece to establish or punctuate the seedy atmosphere of crime and chaos ridden fictional universes. But this is the most horrific thing of all, is Joss wrote a character who is quite happy to rape a woman as a way of punishing her, namely one Jubal Early. What do you want? That's a beating heart, isn't it? Pull off any one of a thousand parts, she'll just die. Such a slender thread. Have you ever been raped? And this, in Joss Whedon's own words, is a character he loves. And part of being a writer is creating entire universes, and that's beautiful. It's even underneath the meaning, just the glory of the, the way, the resonance, the sounds, these, these things, it's... Uh, it's intoxicating. Have you ever been raped? It's, uh, it's intoxicating. Unless you make some kind of ruckus. You draw a monkey wrench into my dealings in any way. Your body is forfeit. We must remember that games don't just entertain. Intentional or not, they always express a set of values and present us with concepts of normalcy. Some people think they can outsmart me. <laughs> Maybe. I've yet to meet one that can outsmart a bullet. Intentional or not, they always express a set of values and present us with concepts of normalcy. <laughs> Get out some more. So what do games that casually rely on depictions of female victimhood tell us about women vis-a-vis -vis their place in society? Ain't nothing but a body to me. And I can find all unseemly manner of use for it. Turn around and put your hands behind your back. Oh. <laughs> Joss Whedon, I know, especially, I love that character. Yes, that's right, Anita Sarkeesian, the feminist is a great fan of a man who created a character who would rape women for punishment. And he loves that character. Even better, it seems that Josh has this fetish for women-hating tropes such as women in freezers and boxes, which as Anita will tell us is an uninventive and unoriginal plot device. No! No, don't! Writers are using the women in refrigerators trope no. to literally trade a female character's life for the benefit of a male character's story arc. What the hell is this? This is my sister. 
We have to remember that the Women in Refrigerators list was created for us to identify, understand, and resist the variety of ways that women and our fictional representations are disempowered and victimized. That women and our fictional representations are disempowered and victimized. Casually sacrificing female characters in the name of setting a ruthless narrative tone. Oh. Just one of many female characters whose random and meaningless death was constructed in order to create a more intricate storyline for a male hero. You're gonna pay for what you took. She was just a whore. A god dang filthy whore. It's a lazy shorthand for evil, meant to further motivate the protagonist to take the villain down and help justify the excessive violence committed by the player in these games. You're gonna pay for what you took. She was just a whore. That they're created by artists and writers who live in the same sexist social systems that we all do. And that's reflected in the characters and the stories. It's saddening to see how flippantly and trivially violence against women is treated, especially when violence against women in the real world are at epidemic levels. Instead, depictions of female pain and victimhood are flippantly summoned to serve as sideshow attractions and storylines about other things altogether. If they take the ship, they'll rape us to death, eat our flesh, and sew our skins into their clothing. And if we're very, very lucky, they'll do it in that order. No. So who's to blame? The entire music industry and how the market functions in general. For decades, they've been making sexualized, shocking, violent media products. More and more, we see the industry cynically relying on sensationalism and glamorization of violence against women in order to boost sales. <laughs> but instead sanitize violence against women and make it comfortably consumable. Rape and sexual assault are also frequently used as a sort of narrative currency to try and raise the emotional stakes and heighten the dramatic tension. Looks like you get that wedding night after all. Casual cruelty implemented as an easy way to deliver a quick emotional punch to the player by presenting attacks on characters specifically designed to appear pitifully vulnerable. I know you're tired. These scenes serve no real purpose in the plot other than to let the audience know that the perpetrators are truly deplorable monsters. Don't go visiting my intentions. Don't ever. These women and their bodies are sacrificed in the name of infusing mature themes into gaming stories. But there's nothing mature about flippantly evoking shades of female trauma. It ends up sensationalizing an issue which is painfully familiar to a large percentage of women on this planet. But there's nothing mature about flippantly evoking shades of female trauma. It ends up sensationalizing an issue which is painfully familiar to a large percentage of women on this planet. Psychic though? That sounds like something out of science fiction. We live in a spaceship, dear. While also normalizing and trivializing their experiences. Now, if I were Josh, I would say this is just bloody preposterous. You've taken a bunch of clips and used them way out of context and put on it a pathetically contrived narrative to make it seem like the movie industry, and me in particular, have an axe to grind against women. <laughs> Which I say, of course, that, that is the Sarkeesian analysis, the truth telling that you were gushing over. A god dang filthy whore. It's a lazy shorthand for evil, meant to further motivate the protagonist to take the villain down and help justify the excessive violence committed by the player in these games. You're gonna pay for what you took. She was just a whore. Seriously, Joss, you produced The Cabin in the Woods, of which this was merely one scene. Imagine the devil sermon and an Anita Sarkeesian-style truth-telling could deliver using the cutscenes from just the women in this movie. You know, all that stuff about the, the whore dying first and the virgin later. Or all the Sarkeesian-style voiceover to tell the audience what they're meant to take from all of this. Joss is trying to normalize tentacle rape in the scene and to trigger helpless women who have a fear of being killed by invulnerable, bulletproof, psychotic clowns. 
I mean, the whole thing is preposterous. You apply this Sarkeesian truth-telling to the gaming industry and claim that it's all incredibly sexist and in need of reform, and yet seem to ignore the fact that if someone had done exactly the same Sarkeesian truth-telling about your movies, they would have come to the conclusion that you are a sick woman-hater who gets his kicks out of watching women getting beaten, being forced to kill themselves, and watching it over and over again in slow motion to have them frozen in boxes and who loves to write characters who threaten to rape women to death and so on and how there's nothing good about what you do or who you are and how your misogynistic anti-woman seed should be wiped from the earth to be honest i'm all with you joss jubal early was a great character and firefly was a great series but you cannot endorse a criticism of gaming being sick and misogynistic when an identical analysis of your material would show that you're also a sick misogynist i mean that's it that's the bottom line you cannot sit down and write characters who will rape women to death and say how you love this character and then complain when other people use similarly gritty characters to make great video games which is exactly what you did when you endorsed Anita Sarkeesian. Let me just say one last thing in closing. People are not angry at Anita Sarkeesian because she criticizes gaming. They're not angry at her because she's a woman. They're not even angry at her because she's a feminist, but because she pisses on them and tells them it's raining. The difference is, of course, that some of us could tell she was talking crap, while others just sat there and thought, wow, the rain's kind of warm today. You just may be the most gullible fool I ever marked, and that makes you special. Anita Sarkeesian did. She went and tweeted about it straight away about her death threats to ensure it ended up on all of the blogs. At best, it's outstandingly dumb. Well, curiously, these uh, threats coincided with the release of her new videos, which until now had been gathering less and less attention since her uh, initial victim-orientated Kickstarter project originally raised the cash. It's far from clear if the docs that she says are being dropped here are anything more than her public address of her uh, charity organization. And as many have pointed out, there's something just really weird about Anita being able to find all of these tweets within 12 seconds of them being posted without her even being signed in to Twitter. But what I can tell you with certainty is with- Makes you special. Truth. I played you from minute one. You see, this is the way that it works. If you have real death threats, credible ones, the first line of action is always to say, contact the FBI and keep your mouth shut. After all, if you go and blow off your mouth in public, you jeopardize any potential investigation and reduce the chances of the person who you think is actually making credible threats being caught. Because if you think someone is making credible death threats, the last thing that you want is for them to go to ground. And yeah, not only did I work this out for myself because it's bloody common sense, but when I had some credible death threats and did contact the FBI, this was the first thing that they told me. Don't respond. But that's not what an- Men. I explained that in the game of patriarchy, women are not the opposing team. They are actually the ball. Further, you are intrinsically sexist, since when Jack Thompson came up with this video games encourage murder bullshit. Though the $130 million suit was dismissed, Thompson is still convinced that these images inspired three murders. Number one! Jack 
Thompson! Grand Theft Auto 4, Grand Theft Auto 4. This barred attorney, Jack Thompson, has long been an advocate against obscenity in pop culture. To him, this is not entertainment. It is a murder simulator. You were like, yeah, but Jack Thompson's an idiot. And people are perfectly justified to wear those everyone hates Jack Thompson t-shirts and to create games where they beat him up. But when Anita Sarkeesian comes out with this, dear mainstream media, I can't but help find it ironic that you are rushing to the aid of a damsel in distress when that very same damsel has pointed out again and again how sexist it is to rescue damsels like this. A damseled woman, on the other hand, is shown as incapable of escaping the predicament on her own and the perpetual victims of male violence. I mean, in games, rescuing a damsel is just robbing them of their agency. And does nothing to change patterns of perpetual victimhood. And preventing them from solving their own problems. That is, mainstream media. You are just turning Anita Sarkeesian into a ball in the game of patriarchy. In our first episode, I described the damsel in distress trope as playing into a form of objectification, because traditionally damsel characters become the central object or goal in a competition between Bullshit. Like, video games cause sexism, and people call her on it. Then you're like, oh no, look what a terrible problem gaming has with sexism. She must really be onto something. But for me, I'm not a sexist like that. I'm for equal opportunities. If I see a wrinkly old man saying something that's bullshit, I call him on it. Game industry lobbyists are quick to point out a total of nine federal courts have rejected so-called studies that video games cause aggression. And I do exactly the same thing if it's a pretty young girl. But coming back to your desperate need to save this damsel, maybe I can help you distinguish between a, a real damsel and someone who is just playing you for a chump. You just may be the most gullible fool I ever marked. And that may...